Hey guys! So it's fall and Thanksgiving is coming. So what better time to talk about America and its early years? Today I'm going to talk about a little bit of lost black history. Obviously it's not permanently lost and some people may have heard of it, but not a lot. So let's talk about Lewis, Clark, and York. Now who's York? I know they didn't mention him in social studies, but that's what I'm here for. York was the slave man of Clark, and they took him with them on their travels across America, and he actually had a really significant role. And I suspect that they don't teach about him, though, because Clark wasn't very kind to York in the end, and especially after all that York had did with them. So the story looks kind of bad if you look into it and see how York got treated in the end. But I think there's an important lesson to be learned, and I will get to that at the end because I think that this, um, what York went through in the end is very interesting, especially when it comes to human behavior. So during my research, I kind of got the impression that some of the mainstream articles that talked about this kind of wanted to paint a picture of York being considered on the same level, you know, equal playing field as the other men in the expedition. And, you know, that they saw his value and that he was given privileges that a typical slave wouldn't have normally gotten, and even the use of a gun and being included in a vote. And so it almost seemed like they tried to kind of play up how they viewed him, like, oh, he wasn't viewed as just a slave. But when I read actual diary entries and quotes from Clark, it doesn't sound like he viewed him as an equal in any way whatsoever. He was a slave to him, and his role as anything more than that throughout the expedition, to me, seemed only out of necessity. It's still a very interesting story either way, and York, you know, he deserves some credit and his story to be heard. So York came about being a part of the expedition because he was originally Clark's slave, and he was passed down to him by his father when he was 14. York was born in Caroline County, Virginia, and Clark's family owned York's family. Um, I think he was born in like the 1700s, but it doesn't seem like they have an exact date. But Clark and York were about the same age, and they basically grew up together. Clark called York his body servant. Not sure what that means, but York was about six foot, 200 pounds. He was a big dude, so maybe that's why. And so I guess he seemed perfect for the expedition because of his size and his strength. And so he kind of ended up being included by default. You know, he was owned by Clark and he was big. He was strong. I guess he was perfect. He also could swim, which um, they said not all the men who could swim. So that was useful, too. Um, the other men they chose were based on them exhibiting bravery in the military. So I'm assuming York's size and strength you know, he probably had some signs of, of bravery and strength. That's probably why they brought him too. And, you know, he could continue his role as being Clark's slave. So I have his diary entries. Uh, by the way, people, when you hear a story about something like Clark and Lewis and Clark and York, when you go to these mainstream articles like the Washington Post that talks about this stuff and they don't go through the actual articles, uh, the actual diary entries, and instead they just give you a summary of it, don't trust places like that. Just go ahead and go straight to the diary entries because that's where you get like a real picture of what happened and how they viewed York. But here's some of his diary entries where he mentioned York. Um, you can kind of get an idea of York's role on the expedition and see how they viewed him. And um, I'm not going to read all of them, but you can just kind of get an idea. Like he had a really significant role and, you know, he definitely deserves to be credited for it. Like Sacagawea. I don't know if I'm saying that girl's name right, but, you know, Sacagawea, the Indian, and Pocahontas, we all learned about them, you know, and how they helped the original um, explorers of America. So York, he should get the same um, credit, too, because he did a lot, according to these diary entries. He definitely did. Okay, so the journey started in May, but it looks like they had a party in April, according to these. Um, June 5th, 1804, so... They're well into the expedition now. Uh, Clark says, York swam to the, what is that, island? <laughs> to pick greens and swam back with his greens. Yeah, so he could swim. He helped pick food and stuff. June 20th, 1804, York very nearly losing his eye by one of the men throwing sand at him in fun. And 
received into his eyes. So that wasn't very nice. I definitely don't think they would have done that to each other, but you know, it looks like they kind of had some fun at York's expense. Um, in August 24th, 1804, um, I killed a deer which York packed on his back. In the evening, I killed two buck elk and wounded two others, which I could not pursue. Yeah, it looks like York was helping out with hunting and carrying. In August 25th, 1804, this one I thought was kind of interesting, kind of irritated me a little bit, this entry, but um, it said this morning, Captain Lewis and myself, they set out to visit a mountain called of evil spirits. That's interesting. Spirit Mound. Um, it says that we returned to the boat at sunset, my servant nearly exhausted with heat, thirst, and fatigue. He being fat and unaccustomed to walk as fast as I went. That's a really odd thing for him to say because all, I mean, for one, he just carried his freaking deer on his back like the day before <laughs> and so i mean i don't think he was weak whatsoever i'm not sure why he would describe him that way because it sounds like he was very strong and i mean he was swimming he was hunting like the more you read in here it sounds like he was very very helpful i don't i don't think he was weak and fat or whatever he wanted to call him i don't know he wasn't being very nice right there because clearly this guy was very strong um, okay, September 19th, I killed a fat buffalo, a fat buck, buck elk, and York, my servant, killed the buck. So he helped out a lot with hunting. October 9th, the Indians, much astonished at my black servant, and called him the Big Medicine. This nation never saw a black man before. October 10th, the Indians, much astonished at my black servant, who made himself more terrible in their view than I wished him to telling them that before I caught him, he was wild and lived upon people. Young children was very good eating. And then he showed them his strength. Um, so it sounds to me like York had a sense of humor. For some reason, he was pretending like he um, ate children. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. But uh, it sounds like he was very much entertainment for the Native Americans. Um, that's like a continuing thing throughout the entry. So that was pretty interesting. October 15th, those people are much pleased with my black servant. October 15th, later on, the greatest curiosity to them was York, Captain Clark's black man. Oh, this is a different guy talking right here. A guy named Ordway. All the nation made a great deal of him. The children would follow after him. And if he turned towards them, they would run from him and hollow as if they were terrified and afraid of him. So, yeah, I don't know. It seemed to me like he was, um, like, I don't think they were probably super scared of him but it seems like he kind of entertained the indians which i think that was probably quite helpful on this journey you know trying to to make things smoother with the native americans and it says they appeared october 26th they appeared delighted with the steel mill which we were obliged to use also with my black servant december 8th this day being cold, several men returned a little frostbit. One of the men with his feet badly frostbit. My servant's feet also frosted and his... I, I'm, a, I'm assuming that's penis because <laughs> what other word could that be? I don't know what that is besides that. So, I mean, that alone, he probably deserves an honorable mention in textbooks. Clearly, he um, made a huge sacrifice. <laughs> But um, moving on, um, they talk more about the Native Americans being interested and curious in him. And then it just kind of goes into the times that he went on like expeditions within the expedition, which is pretty interesting. They, you know, like little hunting missions and stuff and fishing and stuff like that. So that's kind of what it goes into. July 7th, Lewis writes that Captain Clark's black man, York, is very unwell today and he gave him a dose of tartar emetic which operated very well and he was much better in the evening and Clark says the same thing my man York is sick I don't really like how they keep calling him <laughs> his black man I mean I don't know that's annoying but anyways um August 16th 1805 Lewis says some of the party had also told the Indians that we had a man with us who was black and had short curling hair this had excited their curiosity very much and they seemed quite as anxious to see this monster as they were the merchandise which we had to barter for their horses not cool lewis not cool 
they'll be calling him a monster <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's what lewis had to say so yeah I don't know, you know, to think that they considered him equal, I think is quite strange when you read this, but clearly he was still a very much help. Um, October 26th, they determined to stay with us all night, had a fire. Okay, so th he was talking about hanging out with the Native Americans, and it says my servant danced. So he was like entertaining for them, I guess. Um, November 16th, my servant York killed two geese and eight white, black, and speckled brants. Look how helpful he was. Oh, November 24th. So this is the day that I guess these articles typically mention where he got a vote. So York, he voted to examine the other side. Look out, look up river for a campsite. Sacagawea got a vote too. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just like out of necessity. Like, hey, we have, we need more people to kind of put their input in. I still don't think that that means that they didn't see him as like a slave or that they saw him as equal. I mean, they just gave him a vote, but still interesting anyways that at least you know during a time where there was a lot of slavery going on and black people not being treated you know like humans that he probably got he got a chance to be you know treated like a normal human and i know that he liked it and we'll get into that later but i'm you know you can't take that from someone you know their humanity once they understand their humanity after not having it, it it's priceless you know but let's continue december 2nd I dispatched three men to hunt, two and my servant in a canoe to a creek above, so to get some fish. So, yeah, that's cool. He helped with fishing. December 14th, York got sick. My man York sick with colic and griping. I don't know what griping is or if he's just saying he's complaining or is that an illness? I don't know. <laughs> so he got sick again. That sucks. December 22nd. His servant is still sick, December 28th. So he stayed sick for a minute. My boy York, very unwell from violent colds and strains, ca and carrying in meat and lifting logs on the huts to build them. So he was building things. Like he was fishing. He was hunting. He was voting. He was doing the most. Like he did a lot. Like he really did a lot. He definitely deserves some um, recognition for what he did. And he got sick multiple times. So that sucks. December 29th, he finally got better. So he was sick for about two weeks. Um, or is that? A, yeah, two weeks. My servant better. <laughs> so good for him. And so, um, you know, the adventures went on longer. There's more mentions of York and his diary or whatever they called it. Man diary in his blog. <laughs> but um, that's a summary. You know, you guys, if you want to look it up yourself, I'll put the link below. But yeah, so uh, York definitely had a key role and he was super helpful um, to the team so with their survival, hunting and even entertaining, fishing, building things. So I think that's really cool and I want him to be recognized for it. You know, it's unfortunate though that after all this, it seems that his relationship with Clark went very far south. It, it went really bad and this is why I say that he was never really equal. And this may be why he's not really mentioned when other black people, like black slaves from back then are mentioned. Because he was a difficult slave after all of what happened. Difficult as in he wanted his freedom. He was like, look, y'all, I did all of this with you and I want my freedom now. Um, it says here, York and his enslaver, the Virginia born Clark, were at odds. Fully aware of the fame, national celebration, and material compensation that re redounded from the expedition, York was demanding that he be freed as a reward. He had evidently not only assessed the expedition's national importance, but also the value of his contribution to its success. What further underlay his insistence was his desire to be reunited with his wife, who was enslaved in Kentucky. Clark insulted, refused giving York leave to, her, to visit her for a few weeks, but ordering him to return. Um, yeah, he was very upset by Clark wanting or York wanting to leave and his behavior because he at that point felt like he was a human and didn't deserve to be a slave anymore after all of what they went through. But Clark wasn't feeling it. He said, if any attempt is made by York to run off or refuse to perform his duty as a slave, I wish him sent to New Orleans and sold or hired out to some severe master until he thinks better of such conduct. Clark wrote this to his brother in 1808. 
And it says that even after York returned from Kentucky, Clark complained that he was of very little service to me, insolent and sulky. His, his solution was to beat him vainly, hoping York's severe trouncing would correct the inconceivable error of considering himself a human being whose interests were more important than those of his enslaver. But even that was not enough. Among the punishments an incredulous Clark inflicted in his attempt to reform York's seemingly incorrigible attitude were jailing, banishment, hiring York out in Kentucky, including to Jonathan's plantation, which was a well-known cruel enslaver. So, yeah. I guess if we're wondering why we don't know much about the story of York, that could be it. They don't really know what happened to York after he was sent to Kentucky. There are different stories and Clark continued to drag York in all the blogs. But either way, there's a lesson to be learned here. York learned something on the expedition and it was his value, which is oh, it's just so important. He knew after this that he was more than a slave and he deserved to be treated as such. And it lit a fire in him and he became what Clark considered to be difficult because he wouldn't stop fighting for his freedom. And I think this is just so important because as long as this fire is non-existent in a people and as long as they don't know their true value and they see themselves as less than, they're not going to fight for themselves or their families or their people or their property and they become easier to control. And so when a person that you intend to control learns their true value, good luck keeping your foot on their neck. And so to me, they couldn't tell the story of York to the slaves because it would empower them too much. And just like nowadays, as long as we see ourselves as thugs and criminals, the elites can continue to rule over the hood, you know? And so he understood his humanity after going through his travels and there was nothing that could be done to take his humanity away from him. He was forever understood his value and it sounds like he never stopped fighting for his own freedom. And I just think that's really interesting and really cool, you know, and it really tells you how someone will fight for themselves when they understand, they truly understand their value and their humanity. Okay, well, I hope you guys learned something new today and I guess I'm gonna end the video here. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Bye!